Want to start an argument? Just broach the topic of which World War II fighter was the overall best in class. You can debate performance and kill ratios and talk about production numbers, but in the end you're left with one fact. The P-51 Mustang remains the iconic fighter of World War II. This airplane is a relatively rare C-model Mustang, notable for its so-called Razorback and greenhouse canopy. This example belongs to the Collings Foundation, which tours the country along with a B-24 and a B-17. If you want to ride in a Mustang, this is one way to get it. Here's the Collings Foundation's Mark Murphy. The particular P-51 that we have behind us here is a P-51C Mustang. This was built in 1942 and it didn't actually get delivered until 1944. This one flew over in Europe and it was crashed during a training mission. Um, there's a couple differences about this Mustang over the typical uh, D model, which is the uh, teardrop canopy. This one is the Razorback model. There's only about six of them left in the world. And this particular one is the only one in the world with a full set of dual controls, which uh, allows us to do flight instruction out of the back seat. As part of the tour, we're on the road for 10 months out of the year, and uh, we are volunteer pilots, the Mustang pilots, and there's about six of us that rotate in and out. I'm here for three weeks and uh, traveling from city to city every three days, and um, we've been averaging about three to four Mustang flights a day, and so we, we brief the flight with the uh, passenger, uh, tell them what we're going to do. Typically, we start off with a, uh, we take off, climb out, uh, once I get the climb established, I let them have the controls, they get to fly it. And um, once we get up to six, 8,000 feet, I'll take the controls back and we'll do a few maneuvers. I'll show them what a P-51 can really do. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is our fuel flow uh, meter. And that's a critical thing on the Mustang because as we're out uh, flying, we want to make sure, you know, that we, um, our temperatures are right, so we adjust the uh, fuel flow to keep the engine, the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, cooled properly. And then uh, to the uh, the next instrument, instrument over is our our timer. We use that uh, if we're taking a half hour instruction or an hour instruction. We set reset that every time. Uh, obviously, you'll see the compass and then our G meter. And um, most of the riders will uh, do two and a half Gs. Some of the more adventurous riders will go up to uh, four Gs if, um, if they want to do some of the vertical maneuvers. Uh, we have our altimeter and then our manifold pressure. Manifold pressure is important on a Mustang because like, uh, not like regular airplanes, we can't go right to full throttle and take off. With the Mustang, we take it up to about 30 inches of manifold pressure, release the brakes. As we're rolling, we'll go up to 35 inches then we'll go up to 40, then 45, and when I'm about 100 and uh, just about 70 knots, I'm going to take it up to 50 inches, and we hold that 50 inches till we're about 110 miles an hour, or 110 knots, and then uh, off the ground we come. Okay, one of the most critical things that you're going to find on a Mustang is the throttle. This airplane has so much power and so much torque that if you went right to full throttle on takeoff, you could actually torque roll this thing or depart the runway to the left. So one of the biggest things that we have to do on this airplane is advance the throttle slowly throughout the entire takeoff roll. Next to the throttle, you'll see the uh, prop control, and uh, it's full forward for takeoff. We pull it back to 27 revolutions per minute for a climb, and then 25 to uh, 24 for a cruise. This is a very, very critical airplane to keep in trim. You'll notice that the for takeoff, we keep six degrees right rudder because there's so much right rudder pressure that we actually input more uh, to help with the takeoff. Once we get to uh, cruise, I can trim the uh, rudder to neutral, but uh, when I'm part of my landing checklist is to put it back to um, six degrees right in case I had to do a go around. Next to that, you'll see the aileron trim and the um, elevator trim. Both of those work just like you would in any other airplane, so the most critical one on this, on that part is the uh, rudder trim. If you go back a little further, you're going to see the uh, rammed and unrammed air, and uh, that's something that we really always leave in the, um, in the rammed position. Don't have to change that unless for some reason uh, it got plugged and then we could uh, go to the unfiltered air and land as soon as possible. 
just behind that, you're going to see the flap handle. That's something uh, that we really can't see during flight, but you, uh, you wear this airplane, and I just reach back when I need to retract the flaps or put them down for landing. Uh, the handle just slides down all the way down. That flaps down or pull back up. All right, on the right side of the uh, cockpit, you're going to see one of the most important things on a P-51 Mustang is the uh, coolant doors. The coolant doors is what allows this radiator fluid to, um, to keep the temperature. We fly this airplane at 100 degrees, or 100 degrees Celsius is where we keep the uh, main coolant temperature. If uh, It's very critical with this engine to uh, maintain proper temperature and uh, we have a couple positions we have the door full open the door full closed and then we have auto when i take off with this airplane i have it in full open in case there's any emergencies or anything works we're getting the maximum amount of cooling and then as soon as i take off i clean it up part of the checklist after takeoff is to put it in automatic so what's it like to fly the mustang we took a brief flight with Steve Gustafson, who flies left wing for the Aeroshell T6 team and who also flies for Collings. The Collings Betty Jane has a back seat with full controls and instrumentation. For many pilots, the Mustang might not quite be what we expect. It's not exactly fingertip light on the controls and it has so much power that you'd better be fast on your feet to counteract torque effects with rudder. The body from the back seat is somewhat constricted, but it's better from the front. It's also hot, uncomfortable, and just stupid noisy, but then on airplanes supposed to be. You can find out more about the Collins Foundation tour dates by logging on to collinsfoundation.org. For AvWeb, I'm Paul Bertarelli. Thanks for watching.